Now we're going to look at the MLA, inline citation approach. That is, when you're writing your research inside the sentence, you make a quote or a citation, you take someone's idea, how do you put that uh, citation in there? How do you reference that? The list of references, that is, everybody's name and all of the detailed information, that's another section. Right now we're just looking at the inline citation. So this is the stuff that goes inside the parentheses usually, or that's the way we tend to think of it. Now, of course, the most obvious thing that you do is you quote someone's work. You take a direct quote. They say something, they wrote something, you copy it. You take it out of a paper, a book, a movie, or even a speech. That quote needs to be cited. And the way we do that in the MLA is quite different from the APA approach. So here we have an example of direct quoting. Here we have the quotation, which is open quote, close quote, and please pay attention, the comma is inside the quotation marks. Jones 152 wrote, no factor is more important, although not all researchers support this. So this is from a research paper by Jones. This quotation is from a specific location, so we need a page number. Thus, we have the page number 152. We do not include a P. We don't do that. We just have the page number inside there. We do not include a date, such as 2017. No, no date, no year. Here's another example. Perception is key to consumer satisfaction. And that's a quote from Smith. And here's a great little example. Now Smith is inside the parentheses. We have no comma, no symbols or signs or anything here, just one space. That's it. Very simple. And what is this? This is the page number. This quote is from that page. So the author is Smith and the page number is 135. Now those are quotes. What if you're going to be paraphrasing? That is, you're not exactly saying what they said. You're not copying exactly, but it's the idea. And we often do this in our research, don't we? We take the idea and we put that in there. Well, the idea is still going to need a citation. And here we can see this example where we have Jones, 152 has observed the importance of psychology through this social context. There is no quotation mark, so this is not a quotation. This is just an idea being borrowed from Jones. The author is Jones and the page is 152. Now, this is an idea and that idea can be found inside that paper about this page. Not a quote, but still you need the page number there to say it's about from that area inside the paper. This is quite different from the APA approach which usually just cite the whole paper. That whole paper is one idea. But in the MLA approach, you need to cite the page or the pages that it's on. This is where the idea comes from inside that paper or inside that book. Even if you're just giving a general idea, you still need to locate about where inside that paper or that source, about where is it coming from. Now, what if you are saying the whole paper is kind of the idea I'm citing. So in that case, you could say Jones and then from page 152 to page 167. So all of those pages there, that general idea is coming from those pages. How about if it's the whole section or the whole part? For example, the whole part of a book. In that case, you would have for example, the importance of psychology to this social context is important, and the author is Jones, comma. And then we have, quote, quote, a little bit hard to see at the bottom of the screen there, society psychology. That is, this is a chapter in a book. And this chapter, because it's part of a, a larger entity, a larger unit. This is a small piece of something bigger. We use the quotation marks. And in this case, it's the chapter's name. That whole chapter is the idea I want to cover.
What about one work by one author? So in this case, uh, like APA, we use the family name, not the first name, not the middle name. We use the family name. And here we have Tesler. Tesler found that among epidemi uh, epidemiological studies, something, something, something. And in this case, we're not going to include the page number. Why? Because it's the whole work. We're just saying that whole paper about that whole paper is what I'm citing. So we don't have to have the parentheses with the page number, like 152, if it's just the whole thing is what we're citing. Now, much more common is this approach here. Early onset results in a more persistent and severe course. Here is the author, and here are the page numbers. No comma, no P, or anything like that. It's very straightforward. This is the MLA style. How about in the same paragraph? This is the case where we have a citation, and then in the same paragraph we have the same citation again. How can we handle that? Romeo and Juliet presents an opposition between two worlds. Quote, the world of the everyday and the world of romance. Close quote. So here we have a quote, right? Although the two lovers are part of a world of romance, their language of love nevertheless becomes fully responsive to the tang of actuality. Okay, we have two quotes. Here is one quote. Here is a second quote. Those quotes must be from different pages. If they're from different pages, then we need to have the page number of each one, and we do. Here is Zender. And then the first quote is from 138, and the second quote is from 141. And how do we separate that? With a comma. So very interesting, different from APA, very different, and that is name of the author, no comma, and then the first quote, the second quote separated by a comma. Let me clear this out here. Within a single paragraph, different page locations, and you can omit the name. So for example, Romeo and Juliet presents an opposition between two worlds, and here we say the world of every day associated with the adults in the play, and the world of romance associated with the two lovers, and here we have Zender 138. So this is one quote that is from 138. Romeo and Juliet's language of love nevertheless becomes fully responsive. This is the second quote. So here we have the author and the location, page 138. And here we have the second quote, which is on page 141. However, because we've already showed the author, we don't need to write the author again in the same paragraph. So in the same paragraph, Key point. Just like an APA, we don't have to write it all over again, but we do need to be specific if it's a different location. In this, in this case, a different quote. According to Carl F. Zinder, Romeo and Juliet presents an opposition between two worlds. Here we begin a quote. The world of the everyday associated with adults in play and the world of romance. So we have two quotes. Associated with two lovers. And here we say 138. Romeo and Juliet's language of love nevertheless becomes fully responsive. Here's another quote. 141. So here this is kind of the similar case, but what have we done differently? Here is the author's name here. According to Carl F. Zender, we've given the author here. Now we could write out just Zender. But in this case, we've written out his whole name, which is okay if that's the way you want to write it. And we have quotes from him. But this, these first two quotes are from the same page, which is 138. 
And then the second, the third quote actually is over here is 141. We don't need to write the author's name again because it's in the same paragraph. What if you're going to repeat sources? Within a single paragraph, no other source intervenes, then you can use the reference over again. So we've kind of talked about this already, but to, just to be more specific in MLA, we're actually saying that inside one paragraph, if you use the same reference again, you do not need to repeat information if there's no other references in between. A little bit confusing, right? But I think the general rule of thumb is, is easy to understand. Watch out, when do you need to repeat?